In this video, I'm going to show you a chart that tells us everything we need to know about why we stack gold and silver. Regardless of what the talking heads on mainstream media or the, the government or your Robin Hood buddies or skeptical family members say. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you an update on my predicted price pullback in precious metals. And I'll tell you what I'm prepared to do. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. So, silver and gold's price run-up has been truly epic. Gold pushes further into record territory and silver's spot price <laughs> is practically going vertical. I've been getting a lot of comments about the uh, COMEX futures uh, and what's happening there. Guys, th there's been something of a mini run on the bank. There's a lot of paper contract holders that have been demanding physical delivery. And that is something sellers dread having to fulfill. So what's behind these big moves that we're seeing in gold and silver? Well, there are a number of factors that are just combining to create a sort of a, a, a perfect storm. First of all, we know that the Federal Reserve has taken currency creation to binge proportions, right? We also know that they are holding tight to their benchmark short-term rate of zero. They are never going to do the right thing and let the free markets decide what the time cost of money should actually be. Okay, oh no. <laughs> no, they are, they are determined to suppress long-term rates like the 10-year the treasury, whose yield, by the way, fell to a record low of 0.52%. And now Jerome Powell has proudly implied that they are willing to see your cost of living go up, way up. Forget keeping the customer price level at their beloved 2%. Mm -mm. Oh no. <laughs> Whatever it grows to, they are not going to do a blessed thing about it for an indefinite period of time. That means more of your money being spent on fewer and fewer goods and services. That's more and more of your cash in the bank losing value every week. Our GDP is in the dumps. And, and yet the Fed's balance sheet shows no signs of ever coming down. And, and this is the chart that I want you to see. This chart shows you everything you need to know about why we stack silver and gold or why you should be stacking silver and gold. Look at that. Here you see a comparison of the Fed's balance sheet in purple with America's gross domestic product. It's indexed back in 2003 at 100. So you can see the slow progression of growth in our GDP. You can also see the massive spikes that occurred right during the global financial crisis. That's QE1, QE2, QE3. Their attempt to shrink the balance sheet before we then turned around and went ballistic in 2020. What is in the massive area between those two lines constitutes excessive liquidity by the central bank, out of control debt, hyper speculation, especially in the stock market, and gross malinvestments, especially with zombie companies. That space is moral hazard and it has never been like this in all of our country's history and before you say well you know maybe gdp could rise and you know kind of close the gap a little forget about it our gdp is toast it's the worst it's been since world war ii and it's not coming back people there is no closing of this gap you know i did a video a while back warning about what the Fed did in response to the global financial crisis. I called it, it's different this time. <laughs> and now I probably could have called this video, it's the end this time, because I really believe this is the end. But it wasn't always like this. Look at, look at the original chart again. This, this red line of GDP, well, admittedly a stat that the government has, you know, jerry-rigged and, 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 and contorted to make it look really pretty over the decades. 
it's been growing, right, steadily, while our currency printing followed largely in step. You can see that all the way up before the GFC. The American dream was not just a dream, okay? When, when I, Yankee, and, and my father and, and my father's father pursued it, or even my great-great-grandfather who emigrated from Ireland to America, where I might add he faced racism and persecution. You know, it actually caused him to change his last name. But even then, even with all that, the American dream was real, folks. Maybe, maybe you, a first or, or second, maybe third generation immigrant, can attest to what I'm talking about, the American dream. If so, just leave a comment right down there. I, I want to know how different America was when you or, or your ancestors came here. But, but, but for most people in our great nation, more than any other nation on earth, we had the opportunity to make our lives better and set our children up for even better standard of living. But not anymore. Nope. And, and I think about this with my own children, my three kids. I don't think their standard of living is going to be better than mine. I don't think it's going to be better than my parents. For the first time ever, that is what I'm thinking. Our government... Central banksters, they have systematically suppressed the cost of debt and speculation, and they have drastically inflated the value of financial assets. And what has this monetary insanity resulted in? The largest wealth gap in American history. The inability to handle an economic storm, something that we're going through right now. And the breakdown of financial discipline in all areas of our American society. And you know, on that last bullet, let me let me expand on that just a bit. What we are seeing now is Wall Street investors who have become highly leveraged speculators. They don't care if they're throwing their money at a zombie company. It means nothing to them. Earnings mean nothing to them. Momentum is everything. FOMO rules. Corporate businessmen and women are now masters at gaming the financial system with stock buybacks and other balance sheet shenanigans. Middle class households have become debt slaves living hand to mouth on borrowed money. And the Fed has gone rogue. Okay? Rogue. They are the probably the biggest threat to our remaining prosperity. And politicians have bought the, the, the monetary belt from hell that we can spend whatever we want and just print the currency like there's no tomorrow. Do you, do you guys remember the term uh, 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 tax and spend a liberal? Do you remember that? Well, that's so 20th century now. They should call it print and spend liberals. And don't kid yourself, okay? Conservatives have become fiscal liberals and liberals have become socialists. All right, <laughs> sorry for that little rant, but... What does this all portend for us? What's going to happen? I think we're about to go off the cliff, people. All I see is more spending. So how high do we get? We, we are going to continue to spend until the markets say enough is enough and nobody buys the bonds. And then we have the, the cliff that we go off of. Wow. I recently celebrated two years on YouTube. And for two years, I have conservatively called for that cliff to happen. Now, I am convinced we're going to see it in this decade. You know, I'm sure several of you are probably thinking, Yankee, you seriously? <laughs> a decade? No, sooner than that. But I've seen enough you know, Fed can kicking to hedge my bet on this uh, time frame a bit. So by the end of the decade, that cliff is, is, is what's awaiting us. We're going over it, folks. And silver and gold. Well, I'm going to update you on my short-term precious metals price pullback prediction in a second. I'll say that five times fast. <laughs> but I have always advocated for stacking silver and gold hard. It, it's only going to take a very small number of institutional asset managers to allocate some new capital to metals. And, and that'll just drive the prices through the roof. But what I think is has been going on over the last month or so is short sellers getting squeezed and wanting out at any price. As a result, especially 
in the silver market, you got a raging bull market. It, it's pretty exciting to see, right? We witnessed silver cut right through $21 an ounce, 26, 28 levels with barely any resistance. But here's my update, okay? Update on my price pullback prediction. <laughs> with this incredible pace of, of uh, 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 uninterrupted gains, I still expect to reach a level where it can't sustain itself on the short term. And I think that's happening real soon. In fact, I think in the next two weeks, okay, we are going to see investors get aggressively short again. And therefore, I still expect the spot price could dramatically reverse to the downside any day now. I, I know this is controversial. I'm going to get hammered again in the comments. I'm tripling down on this, guys. All right. Well, now, will it reach the teens again like I speculated two weeks ago? <laughs> I highly doubt it. Okay. Yes. Probably it won't hit the teens. 23 bucks an ounce. I can see that. Now, unfortunately, Yankee doesn't have a crystal ball. So I, I, I can't advise you on, you know, whether you should buy now or later or how to time your purchases. Other than to say that if you don't have any of this stuff, if you don't have silver and gold in your physical possession, you're highly exposed. Okay. You, you need to be doing that. I, I've been stacking for years now. But... But many of you are just starting out. And you've asked me, literally, in emails and in comments, Yankee, should I wait? You're calling for this you know, price pullback. Should I just wait for it? I'm like, you know, if you don't have much of this stuff, I don't think so. Frankly, you need to get some now. And, and here, think about this. If silver hits triple digits, breaks through 100, say in another you know, two to three years, Will you really care if you bought silver when the spot price was 28 bucks versus 23? I don't think so. Many of you have uh, also commented that if and when we see this, you know, short-term price pullback occur due to, you know, a variety of reasons, uh, premiums are going to go up, Yankee. It won't make any difference to the actual price of physical silver. You know, it, 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 it's just it's just not going to make any difference. That is a jaded yet totally understandable comment. I get it. OK. And to some degree, I agree with you. I do, especially with online bullion dealers. They are notorious for doing that. Right. Price of spot drops, the paper markets go down. They don't change anything. In fact, their margins increase. The price stays the same, right? But not with a reputable local coin shop dealer like mine, Tim. <laughs> Tim Marshner. He doesn't play that game, guys. If, if spot drops, his premium stays the same. The price goes down, right? That's just the way to go. And, and, and I'm telling you, you need to find a LCS dealer. To stop solely relying on online bullion dealers. I know they're convenient and there's some great deals. Sometimes I use them, JM Bullion, SD Bullion, um, occasionally Atmex. <laughs> um, but really, focus on a local coin shop dealer first. So again, I think the pullback is coming between now and and September, and I'm increasingly getting ready for it. After that, <laughs> I don't think a top in silver should should even be considered until after it's gone beyond its all-time high. Well, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have uh, questions about my <laughs> short-term price pullback prediction, you know, let me know. Um, I really want to answer your questions. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.